Hi, I'm Emma Hamza, and I'm one of the mentors at Sim for Success and a sophomore chemical engineering student at NJIT. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's very simple, but has very complex reactions and processes when it's being made, and that is bread. Bread is an incredibly versatile and useful food. It can be used to make many different things, from sandwiches to French toast to making croutons for some salad, or even just enjoying it on its own. Just looking at a slice, it's hard to believe that most loaves are formed with only a few ingredients. The complexity of bread comes down to the steps in the bread making process and the science within those steps. So let's break it down. Most steps of bread need at minimum these five ingredients. Here we have flour, water, yeast, salt, and sugar. Other things can be added to change the flavor or the texture, but the main chemistry lies within these simple ingredients. The most important ingredient we have here is the yeast, which is what makes the bread light and fluffy. So what is yeast and how does it work? Yeast is a tiny little organism that is used in lots of different foods, but it's most commonly known for being used to make bread. When you get yeast from the store, it is dried out and dormant, kind of like it's sleeping. To get it to work, you need to wake it up. This can be done by putting it in some warm water. The warm water hydrates the yeast and gets it up and moving around again. Now that it's awake, it's going to be very hungry. This is where the sugar comes in. Once the sugar is added, the yeast begins eating the sugar and digesting it to create carbon dioxide in a process called fermentation. You can see this happening when the mixture of yeast, water, and sugar starts to get foamy with bubbles. So now that the yeast is up and ready to go, we need to add the flour, which is the main ingredient in any type of bread. When you add the flour to the water, the flour undergoes a chemical reaction and starts to transform. The flour in the water mixture becomes the dough through a process called hydration. If you were to zoom in super close on the dough, you would be able to see the water molecules interacting with protein molecules in the flour. The water molecules bind together two different protein molecules to create gluten, which is what makes the dough sticky and stretchy. The hydration process takes a while, so the dough is left to sit in warm area to absorb all the water and also to start to rise. The act of rising occurs from the yeast producing more carbon dioxide, which is now getting trapped by the dough and causes the dough to expand. After the dough rises, you'll be able to see all the little holes and bubbles that have been formed in the dough. Next, you need to knead the dough. Kneading the dough gives it shape and structure through the formation of a gluten network. This can be more easily demonstrated with some string. After absorbing all the water, the gluten proteins are slightly overlapped, kind of like the strings on the stable. Before kneading, the gluten network is very thin and has lots of large gaps in between. As you knead the dough, the gluten starts to overlap more and more like layering on pieces of string. This creates a much denser, mesh-like structure known as the gluten network. This network of gluten gives the bread its shape, so it's able to stand tall and hold in all the gas bubbles produced by the yeast. So now that the dough is made, how does it become bread when you bake it? When you initially put the dough in the oven, the warm oven makes the yeast continue to produce carbon dioxide gas, which makes the dough rise even more. However, as the temperature inside the bread continues to increase, the yeast eventually dies and stops producing gas. The gluten and other proteins inside the bread will also begin to harden, and the dough will solidify into a loaf of bread as it continues baking in the oven. After putting in all the work and waiting for hours, you will be met by a nice and delicious loaf of bread. And when you cut into it, you'll be able to see all the little pockets of air that were created by the yeast, which gives the bread a really nice and soft texture. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you try making bread on your own sometime. It's really fun. Thank you for attending today's event, and as you go, remember, STEM is in everything that you do.